Hello Colliders! Oh, it's so awesome that you're joining with us today. Uh, I'm so excited to have this lesson. We're starting a new series today. That's awesome. This series is building off of our last series. Our last series was on like what we believe and how we can share that belief with other people. But this series is looking at how we can share that belief with the specific types of people. So for instance, today we're looking at how we can share our faith with like our family especially if we have family members that aren't believers. So what does that look like, especially for us as youth? And this is gonna be a great discussion. There's, there's plenty of room for uh, discussion today. Before we get to some of that though, we first want to get to um, some announcements that we have, a couple of changes and things that, that are going on, and um, a, for a chance for you to read the scripture verse on your own. So see you after that, right? scripture that we just read in first john it's really great to have you with us pete and mary thank you so very much uh for joining with all of us us youth probably half the youth almost know you guys because of kind of what we're talking about today but um, when we just got done reading that first john passage is there anything in there that that really sticks out to you as we're thinking about sharing our faith with our families and sharing our faith uh, and serving our families Well, when it says we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren, I think that's what families do for each mm. other. Moms and dads lay down their life for their children. We would, moms and dads would would do anything to yeah. keep their children safe and to provide for them. And so, laying down your life for a mom or dad is maybe not as hard as thinking about doing it for someone else. But, but just your brothers, right? And it says brothers in there, not sisters or. <laughs> Just kidding, Abby. I love you so very much. My <laughs> mom <and> sister. <laughs> so, um, you know, this idea, we just got done. We had a whole series on how to share our faith and, and some of the, like, cornerstones of what, what does it mean, uh, what does the gospel mean, and how do we share the gospel with other people. So we've kind of gone through that, but now we're looking more intently at how to share that with, with our family members. Um, what are some of your thoughts when sh about sharing your faith with family I think <clears throat> the, the the number one thing to me is that you, you gotta be real mm, yeah it's like when Joshua it says choose you this day whom you will serve so you have to determine who I'm gonna serve oh yeah if you, if you don't know who you're really serving it's 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 phony and it and your kids or anyone around you will see right through it so yeah. You decide what's <laughs> what, who you're serving, and then do your very best. And as you live it out, your actions speak louder than words. Um, do you guys have any like stories, like or one uh, a story of of you working at sharing your faith within your family, like being intentional about sharing your faith and practicing that within your family? Well, raising our kids, we would have daily prayer time and Bible time. But now with our grandkids, we have been intentional about um, having just a special time of, of Bible story or devotion wow. time with them. And when we have different different groups of kids over, we now we're getting where they're getting old enough. We ask them to bring. Will you bring the devotion? Will you bring the scripture that we want to talk about tonight? So 
So you're asking some of the grandkids to bring the scripture, mm -hmm. bring the devotion. Mm -hmm. And that really just, I mean, that already answered then my next question is like, how do you get your kids involved in practicing? If they can share a devotion and share their thoughts on scripture within the family, that's good practice for then sharing it with other people who aren't believers, right? Uh, in my mind, that, that's a great practice. And I think it happens because we we have to be an example, and we could, we didn't have brother to be brother and sisters to be examples to each other of being um, obedient to being in your word and obedient to praying and praying aloud. So I think our kids heard us pray, so they knew that they could go to the Father them, themselves. And then when it's a natural thing in your family, you don't think twice about. I don't know about, I guess I don't know actually about your guys' background, but so like I would say in, in my family's background, like my, 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 if I'm sharing my faith and I'm sharing it through using my story as a technique to share that, like my own upbringing, it really starts with my father who, who, who didn't exactly have that like example set for him. Mm -hmm. He had to be the one that was like, I'm, I'm going to put a stake in the ground. I'm going to claim this and I'm going to change this for my family and that's incredibly hard when you don't have that as an example if you're the one that's like i didn't have this example for me i didn't have daily time with god ex set as an example for me what does that even look like within my own family this is really hard lesson for some youth it's like they don't see this and it's also it's like oh having a family that's way down the road but this time talking about it now is where the example is set and especially then with your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You can start, you can stake that in the ground right now and say, you know what, I'll start with my brothers and sisters. I'll start a family, like a time with God. Because your kids are, your grandkids are bringing the devotion mm -hmm. lessons and stuff. Anybody watching this lesson, no matter how old you are, you can put a stake in the ground and say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that with my brothers and my sister. <laughs> sisters. <laughs> I don't think it matters <clears throat> to us. It didn't matter how little or what age they were. Whatever they prayed or whatever they shared is valuable. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, Because we well, have this notion yeah. that unless you're the whatever, you got some education or you got some reason to share it, that somehow you, what you right. think is more valuable, and that's not the case. No, it's not. Well, even when our family gets together <clears throat> now, sometimes it's the five-year-old that says the prayer before we eat for us mm -hmm. because they want to, so you don't have to. That's awesome. I think with our kids growing up, we just did, did things as a family that way, serving. And, um, but I see more with our grandkids and more of the discipleship of the older with the younger, especially when the younger get to see the older um, share scripture or share something on their own. They have that example, not just of their parents, but of an older cousin or sibling. And I think that's, um, it's a real Something didn't yeah. say quite right, or whatever. Right. <clears throat> we we often feel like it doesn't matter how I treat my family, but like I got to treat other people outside of my family. And it's it's I think it's the opposite. I think mm -hmm. that God's given us families to that push our buttons because it's like this is a practice of patience. Who's really going to test your patience more than a brother or a sis, you know, a sister? And so if you can practice those things in the family you can practice those things outside of the family. So yeah. what would you say to a youth that maybe doesn't have, isn't blessed with like this type of a family setting for them? Um, they're not blessed with being able to see this w within their own family. What would you say to them as maybe a, a message of encouragement? I think you can be the first one to start the tradition. Mm -hmm. Always, I mean, Mary and I, neither of us had, we didn't have, we had parents that were together and we had a lot of things going for us, but we didn't have families that do were as intentional as we are, not even remotely. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And um, so there's nothing says that it can't start with you and it can't start today. So yeah, how, um, do you have any ideas? I mean, it's been a while since I like, guess it's been you know in junior high or high school. But do you have any ideas for um, some of the youth on how they can? Um, some things that they can do to start some of this, uh, sharing their faith within their family mm -hmm. and uh, practicing their faith and practicing serving within their family? Well, for me, when I was 13 is when I received Christ. And I, intent I then started reading my Bible. So I've been reading the Bible since I was 13. And, wow. and, that, and that wasn't a habit in my family of Bible reading. Mm. So that was just something that the Lord led me to. And I am so thankful all these years later that I've been in scripture for that long. So I would say do that and know, and I think to don't feel sorry for yourself. God, mm. God has appointed you in a place and a time. Yeah. And no matter what your family looks like, God loves you and sees you and has a plan for you. And you can rise up out of that. Incredibly well said. Yeah. yeah. I love that message. And I think um, also, for a long time, it, it was, I never wanted to share my faith because I didn't think I knew enough mm -hmm. or I had all the answers. Right. And then you, I heard, it, you know, everybody's job isn't to have all the answers. All you have to do is say what God wants you. Some, some plant the seeds, some water, some. So you don't have to have all the answers. Just share what you know. Right. Share if if it's even just a joy that you have, share it. And mm -hmm. God can do miraculous things with whatever little truth you share. It, we don't have to have all the answers. Amen, amen, amen. I cannot emphasize that point enough. Mm -hmm. Like that, especially especially in like Christian church circles, mm -hmm. we always feel like we have. It seems like most people believe we have to have all the answers, and that's. Thank you for that. Like, we do not have to have all the answers. Right. And, and your family is a perfect practice training ground mm -hmm. for that, um, to be able to practice some of these things. Mm -hmm. So thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, this has been great. You guys are going to have a great small group time uh, to talk over some of these things and some other questions. So thank you so much for being here. Okay. <laughs>